Hey guys! Today I wanted to talk about how to work on playing in tune. Intonation is something we consistently need to be working on. It's not something you just master and then all of a sudden you don't have to worry about it anymore. No, I constantly have to be working on my intonation. And so I wanted to show you a few things that I like to do and you can incorporate this in your own practicing as well. So the first thing is I practice with a drone a lot. When I'm warming up in the morning, I'll play some scales and I'll do some exercises and I always have my drone on to make sure that my intonation is solid. So um, I'm gonna put a drone on and play an A major scale. I'm in solo tuning, so it's gonna sound up a whole step. It'll sound like it's in B, but I'm playing in A. So I usually play with a metronome as well, but I'm just gonna show you what I do typically. I play very, very slow. and take as long as I need to adjust each note. And so on and so forth until I get all the way up to A and then come back down. So I like this for a couple reasons. First of all, I do it in the morning because it kind of helps me warm up my ears a little bit. And so I'm working on the, hearing the intervals in between, especially those weird ones that we don't normally um, hear as as easily as the others, like the major second or major seventh, those are really difficult for us to hear at first. And so I like this because you're in the same key and you can sort of hear the notes against each other. And it also helps with your muscle memory. If you're playing the same scale for, say, a week at a time, then you sort of get used to where the notes are. And then over, over time, when you play an A, you know where to put your hand. So the second thing I do is I constantly have a tuner on. Anytime that I'm playing, I always have a tuner. If I don't have a drone on, my tuner is on telling me if I'm out of tune and when and how, by how much. So just an example, if I'm playing something like uh, an interval, so say I'm playing G and B together. That's kind of a tricky interval for me and I found that typically um, my B is a little bit flat. And so what I do is I'll play both of the notes together listen and if it doesn't sound like it's in tune or even if it does I'll check it with the metric I mean with the tuner and then sort of listen a few times to hear and make sure that I have it in my ear and then repeat until I have it and I can easily just grasp it once I get to those notes so it's nice because it's a visual for when you don't have the drone or when you can't really use the drone and it keeps you in check. It doesn't lie at all. So it's nice to have that there. Uh, another thing I like to do is I record myself and listen back. So sometimes you might miss things. I guarantee that you will miss things and you might not be able to hear if something is out of tune when you're playing or you might just skip over it by accident. So if you record yourself, then you can sort of hear what you missed and you can also measure your tendencies. So sometimes, um, let's just say, let's take the note F sharp. Sometimes if I'm running up here, I tend to overshoot and go a little bit too far up into the G. And so I might not realize that when I'm practicing, but if I listen back on a regular basis, then I'll be able to say, oh, okay, normally I overshoot there, so I need to aim a little bit lower. And you might be able to hear patterns in your playing, like um, whenever you play at the heel, you're always a little bit flat things like that. So it, that just helps to keep you in check. Finally, this is my favorite and also the most brutal, but I like to play with MIDI files. So I take passages of my music and put them into Finale or another kind of music software and turn it into a MIDI file. And then I play along with it in my practicing. So I'll maybe put one headphone in, play along with it. And just like the tuner, MIDI files do not lie. They are always in tune. And so it really, really holds you accountable, almost in a painful way, but it's very helpful. Um, and so sometimes what I'll do is I'll make a MIDI file and I'll put it in a program similar to Amazing Slow Downer, which I really like to do. And if you've never heard of Amazing Slow Downer, I'm sure you can guess what it does. It slows things down as much as you like or speeds things up. So you can take an exercise you've been working on, put it in Amazing Slow Downer, put it at half tempo and then bump it up slowly. And you can not only work on playing faster, but you can work on your intonation. So if you follow the link underneath this video, you'll be able to go and see a few of the MIDI files that I've made and you can save them for yourself and either practice them with Amazing Slowdowner or not. 
Um, but I hope that all of this helped. Like I said, intonation is a constant battle. It's never ending. So keep working on it. Find the things that help you the most. And I hope this helped. So I will see you next time.